just now. <laughs> Three strict abortion laws passed in the state of North Dakota, drawing a new line in the sand for both pro-life and abortion rights activists. And Andrew, um, for people who say, ah, oh, that's North Dakota, we're going to say why this is important, not just out in big sky country, but this is a huge issue nationally. It's like one of these things that there's been a sea change in state legislatures and state governments, and a lot of people haven't noticed, Rich. The new law bans most abortions in North Dakota. Pro-lifers are calling it a victory and a model for the country. Abortion laws across America are facing a major challenge as North Dakota becomes the first state to pass legislation banning nearly all abortions. I think they are an infringement upon my rights as a woman. At the center of the debate, when does life begin? The new law outlaws abortions if a fetal heartbeat is detected, something that can happen as early as six weeks into a pregnancy using a transvaginal ultrasound. Many women don't even know they're pregnant at six weeks. This is happening across states, so people cannot simply look away because it's happening in North Dakota today. It's possibly coming to a state near you. The general standard from Roe versus Wade is viability, prohibiting abortion when the fetus would be able to live outside the mother's womb. North Dakota's new laws would, in effect, eliminate that requirement. I think we set the standard, frankly, for the rest of the United States, and I think we all can be most proud. Right to Life lawmakers hope to amend the state constitution to say life begins at conception. North Dakota believes in the life of the unborn child, believes that the heartbeat is life. Doctors at the only abortion clinic in North Dakota fear the measures will eliminate the ability for a woman and her doctor to decide what's best as abortion rights activists fear the worst. You don't have to get into a time machine to remember, you know, in 1970, women died because they couldn't get the medical care they needed. And that's the direction that proposals like this would take us again. Oh, we're gonna see where this thing goes, Andrew. Thank you. And I wanna bring in our guest right now, Kelly Baden of NARAL Pro-Choice New York. And again, if you can sum up, Kelly, to somebody who says, well, that's not my problem, that's out there. Tell them why it's not just North Dakota, and we're seeing this in state after state now. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me back, first of all. But um, the uh, the folks who brought this uh, these bills to North Dakota are not people from the state. This is not the will of the people rising up and demanding their legislators do something about abortion, right? They want their state legislators to focus on real issues that North Dakotans are facing. This is very much a concerted effort across the country. As the package noted, we've seen uh, increased numbers of restrictions on abortion and other reproductive health and rights in the past three years in state legislatures. And, you know, states kind of keep pushing the line to see what they can do and to try to outdo one another to to become the most anti-choice state. And also on the state. Supreme Court to take this Absolutely. thing back up, right? Yeah. And I think that's actually one of the most disheartening and outrageous things because as the governor signed the bills this week, he very, uh, particularly the six-week ban, a ban on abortion at six week weeks, which is before most women even know they're pregnant, he very clearly said that he knows this is unconstitutional. And to me, it's a little bit uh, outrageous to think that a governor would uh, really be sort of playing politics and, and feeling like he's doing a legal experiment to push the boundaries on Roe v. Wade when real women's lives are at stake and their health is at stake and their access to abortion care is at stake. Speak to that last point for a second, because in reading this, there's one clinic in the whole Correct. state of North Dakota, and there are certain states that don't even have a clinic, mm -hmm. right? That, so from a geographical standpoint, um, I'm not trying to do the map quest here, but for somebody who's five, six hundred miles, yep. and you got to find out in six weeks, yep. there's the logistics of even getting to the one single clinic to begin with. Absolutely, and it's not like the neighboring states of North Dakota are particularly friendly anyway, right? South Dakota has its own uh, extreme restrictions on abortion, so if somebody's living in North Dakota and this were to go into effect in August, um, it's not like they can just go to their neighboring state. It, there's a lot of, of uh, barriers placed in the way of women in North Dakota if they're seeking abortion care if these laws go into effect. Mark, help me with the uh, Clip Notes version of this. If the governor knows it's unconstitutional, the courts say it's unconstitutional, uh, do they have a legal leg to stand on here? Test case, just like the guns. Same thing the NRA did. It's right out of their playbook. But this is appallingly stupid, whether you support abortion rights or against them. The amount of money they're going to spend on this test case in a, a budget crunch when the Republicans are preaching fiscal austerity, it's reckless and it's irresponsible. And it alienates people in the middle, like me, Scoop Jackson type Democrats. This is just red meat for the base. It's completely unnecessary and it's insane. There, in, in 2013, you, to be fooling drive, around with this. They, we already know donations are, are coming right. in hand over fist to this. Right. 
from the conservative side, is this the wrong fight to pick? You know, I don't necessarily disagree in it being necessarily the wrong fight. I do think that six weeks is not enough. I think most women, as stated, uh, literally find out that they're pregnant in five to six weeks. So I think if we're going to actually have that that discussion, it, the, the term needs to be extended to at least uh, eight to ten weeks. Um, but I think it, it goes back to this. You know, the state right now is going through some serious uh, budget issues. I don't think this is necessary right now uh, for the legislation to focus on looking at six weeks for a woman to decide uh, if she's going to have her child or not. Um, I don't think, you know, and I actually support, believe it or not, I'm actually pro-choice, and I actually support the fact of uh, the state should not be in the business and politicians and legislators should not be in the business of, of a person's bedroom or their decisions with their bodies. Um, I don't think that the state can afford it right now, and I don't think that it's good, a good stewardship of money. You've conversations this week with your fellow <laughs> conservatives. Um, <laughs> Kelly, do you take what happened in North Dakota and some of the other states as a cause for alarm, or are you actually a little hopeful for this because they've gone too far this time? Well, a little bit of both. I mean, I think the first thing to note is that mm -hmm. North Dakotans are up in arms about this. More than a thousand right. people rallied across the state in the you know freezing cold snow, and a thousand people might not seem like a lot for New York, in but for North, North Dakota, Dakota. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, okay. um, so they're they're not happy about it, and I think there are some some bright spots throughout the country here in New York mm -hmm. State. Of course, we have Governor Cuomo advancing yeah. the women's equality agenda, and and you know he's trying to say, look, we need to take steps here in New York State to protect women's health because we see what other governors and state legislators are doing throughout exactly. the country but this issue you can sense if you ever think that they finally have a settling point on this one <laughs> um, you get reminded uh, by the folks in North Dakota we're not even close or at least by the people who use North Dakota <laughs> for the case Kelly thank you so thank much you. all right we'll take a quick break here when we come back we're talking March Madness now uh, listen if you love hoops here you know that it's a great time of the year you get your bracket destroyed with uh, you know schools in Florida you never even heard of but the point is there is a case right now making its way through, and in fact, it's in San Francisco in the court, that could change the way that we know college athletics, certainly basketball. We'll be right back with more on that after this.